Coach, I ask Mario the same thing, but just what, what's it say about the will and all that that on a play where every season NC fought to get the centimeter or millimeter or whatever it was he needed to keep that track going? I mean, that about sums it up, right? There was, and that wasn't the only time in that game that that happened. You know, there was one of the scoring drives, we had a third and six, and he ran over a guy for a first down. Yeah, enough said, right? How'd you feel about the way he handled the game in its entirety, Henry? I mean, I thought he handled it great, poise. I mean, if you think about the way the game went, first drive of the game, we're backed up, his feet are in the end zone, right? And um, showed pocket presence was great. Um, was watching him close just to see demeanor, you know, uh, everything about his, you know, actions on the sideline and out there was, was um, extremely positive, you know, and, you know, there's always things that you wish you would have done, like, you know, thought we could have hit a couple of those over the middle, but uh, ultimately, through the course of the game, I mean, I thought he played his tail off and I thought he battled, you know, he really, really, really showed a lot of fight. What about the way uh, Tyler hand, handled everything throughout the week and then actually having to come in at the end of the game? Yeah, I mean, extreme professional, right? I mean, I told him, I said, look, you know, th this is, A, it's not the first time this has ever happened in the history of football. There's a lot of, you know, stories out there. There's a blueprint for how you handle this, right? And I thought he handled it great. You know, he was great all week, practiced great was great on the sideline, was great with Emory. I mean, look, that's what you gotta do, you know? I mean, heck, you know, there's very few people that have played this game that haven't been in that situation. I've been in that situation, you know? I mean, it's just the way it is. I mean, you gotta, you know, I mean, you gotta take the high road and you gotta, you gotta be ready for your next opportunity. And that's what I preach in that room is like, look, when you get your opportunity, you take advantage of it, you know? And if, if something happens to, that, that takes you off that road when you get your next one you take advantage of it and that that's just that's the reality of the sport sam it seems like Kobe george has really come along this year it leads you guys i think in receiving yards and touchdowns had a great game on saturday just how has he grown throughout the season to where he is now you know he's he's become a really steady player um you know in games like that man coverage i mean he's got wiggle he's he, he sticks his toe in the ground uh, he's made a lot of big plays through the course of the year um, and, and that game was, was one that's been really on the verge of happening for a little while. And we just need more of them, right? Um, just need, it, need it every week, right? That's, that's the key, just consistency, right? Consistency. And the 85-yard the touchdown and catch that he had, uh, just what did you see from the sideline on that play? Were you surprised he caught it? I wasn't surprised he caught it. I mean, I, I knew, I had an idea where the ball was going. You never know exactly where the ball is going because you call plays and, you know, there's reads and there's coverages take you places. They were playing the field. They were, they were playing on the low hip because a lot of teams do that because you run a lot of curl routes to the field or whatever. So I just didn't know how, how deep and far the safety was, you know, and I thought it was, an elite throw because if he puts air on it, which you really want to put air on that ball, but the safety was so deep, if he'd have put air on it, he probably would have got to it. And so he, he took air off and threw it a little lower, which I thought was a phenomenal decision for a young quarterback and, you know, elite play by, by George, obviously. Obviously there was some chaotic, there was a chaotic moment and yeah. adverse situation in the two minute drill, but when you go back and watch that, what's your assessment of how things went in the two minutes? You talking about the last drive? Yeah. I mean, look, I mean, they can cover pretty good, you know, and I knew that going into that game, you know, I knew that if we got it towards the end and we had a possession to go score, I mean, look, you're not going to get wide open guys a lot of times versus their man coverage. I mean, they're probably the better team throughout the course of this season of playing man coverage. And so we had some opportunities where guys, you know, we, we ran a slant route the first play and Strep was open was a little off if you hit that that's I mean there's nobody else there you know so that might be a 30 or 40 yard gain um, typically in two minute situations you need a chunk play you know you need a chunk play you need something to happen that breaks the guy loose you know so we just didn't get it you know we, we methodically moved it to the 50 and then we missed on a couple um, back shoulders to Kobe 
And then the last play was trying to run uh, um, an out to, um, to Strep. And they covered it decent. I thought he got open a little bit late, but you know, I mean, it's, that's, that's more of a testament to those guys. I mean, the two things that they do good on defense is they rush the passer and they cover. Well, what do you got to do in two minutes? You know, you got you to gotta protect and throw. So we tried to hit them on a run. I think it was a minute 13 left. Um, I thought they would be. I thought the safeties would be more spread. They actually had the safety a little closer to the line than I thought. So I thought we could hit them on a run like we did at the end of the first half. I don't know if you remember that at the end of the first half. We hit them on a run. They got it down there. I thought it'd be a similar situation in that, but the safety probably because of that play was playing a little bit tighter, and his eyes were a little bit more in the backfield in that situation. So. I thought they did a good job of defending two minute and um, and obviously look, you watch film and now, are there plays I wish I would have ran in certain situations? There always is. You know, that just that's that's facts every game, it don't matter if you win or lose. There's regrets in every situation, you know. I mean hell I wish I wouldn't have called the last play that Emory got hurt on, you know. If I'd have called a different play to play before and we got the first down, I wouldn't have had to call that play. And so all of those things go through your mind, you know, I mean, what is, you know, it's easy to be that guy, you know, my wife's that guy a lot, you know, she, she knows what, she knows the exact play to call a day after I called it, you know, so. <laughs> yeah. she, she has a tendency to do what she was talking about. She, she has a tendency to read a lot of things, so she's an expert, you know. I'm the only one that's not an expert, put it that way. <laughs> when, when you get to, I got 20 seconds. When you get to this point, when you get to week 11, whether you've got 10 wins or 6 wins or no wins, yeah. how do you keep, when, you, when you've got a team that's trying to build, and you're in you know, the early steps of building something that Mario wants to get to, how do you keep the focus on development? When you get to this I mean, focus, I mean, look, focus on the positives, you know what I mean? We're extremely positive group, you know, coaches and players. I mean, look, this game will beat the life out of you if you let it. You know, don't let it, you know. Focus on the positives. And so, are there negatives? There are negatives everywhere unless you're undefeated, you know. Uh, so, the things that we've been doing good week in and week out are, are, are things that you can 100% build on. I mean, we've been physical every week. We ran the ball against good teams better than anybody ran it on them all year. You know, the first half of the Florida State game is a testament. I mean, they haven't been gashed like that all year. And so the second half, what did they do? They, they got people closer to the box and they was like, well, y'all gonna have to throw the ball, right? So we needed to make some plays. The third quarter was, was a reflection of how well we ran the ball the first half. And you know, they didn't like that. And so they came out and they were like, okay, let's close it down, take the air out of it a little bit, and let's see if they can move the ball throwing it, you know? And, and honestly, we had some things and we just missed it. You know, it was a little off on a couple third downs that would have kept drives going on the first third down, right? And so um, you gotta just make those plays and keep drives going. And so, you know, it's easy to look at things um, as far as, you know, on, from a far out view and say, you know, point your finger at certain things. When you watch the film, like we watch the film, it's, it's also very easy to point out, look, these are a lot of things we're doing good. All we gotta do is these two or three things a little bit better, and we're in a situation where we're not fighting to tie it at the end, we're fighting to run it out at the end. You know what I'm saying? So it's not hard to see when you watch it like we watch it, but ultimately we also have to have guys make those plays, you know? because ultimately that's going to get us over the hump. More of what I was asking though is, are the kids still in it? The human condition being yeah. that is, how, are the kids still engaged? In oh, 100%. That part, in that part? Yeah. I mean, kids love playing ball, you know? I mean, they, they look, in my opinion, uh, kids are probably more resilient than the coaches. You know what I'm saying? Like, they can probably get over stuff probably a little easier than we can. Um, at times, you know, most of the time. And so um, we have to just make sure that we uphold our part of the deal. And our part of the deal is to stay positive, you know? And, it, and if typically if our energy and the things that are coming out of our mouth are the right things, then they will, they will follow, you know? And you also have to have the leaders of your team, you know, staying positive. And so it's, honestly, it's, it's easy here right now to stay positive because there is, there's a lot more good things out there from our perspective than bad, you know? And we've struggled in a handful of games offensively, 
and it was easy to see why. You know, we needed certain things to do a little bit better. And um, and then you get in games like that, and you know, I mean, hey, you know, you're right there in it at the end. You you you've been more productive than their average, and you just gotta have a drive at the end to to tie it. You know, and so being right there is 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 good, but that's not what we want, right? It's 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 close, but not close enough. And so, but there's definitely positives throughout the course of the game and throughout the course of the season that you can lean on. And one of the biggest ones, honestly, is is just up front. I mean, we protect the quarterback as good as I've seen. We run the ball as good as I've seen. And so those two things are typically the two things that are the hardest. And so if we can keep doing that, then I promise you the other stuff will fall in place. Last week you said, um that Tyler's issues the last, few, the last month or so has been um, trying to do too much. Oh, um, what now? That Tyler's issues kind of stem from trying to do too much. Obviously, you know, the drive he had against FSU, he asked him to do a lot, so it's not really a great statement. Yeah. But do you think he's improved on, on that front from what you've seen in practice? I do. Uh, I honestly do. I mean, the drive at the end is tough. It's tough to go in there when you haven't played and try to win the game, you know? Uh, he made a couple really good throws, and he was trying to make a play at the end, and you know it's fourth down, so why not throw it up, right? You got to, and so I would think different if he didn't, right? And so um, his his mentality and focus is a little bit different right now. A lot of times, too, you know, you don't have to look far for this. Like I know that like everybody like gets tunnel vision on certain things, but uh, Alabama had a quarterback that got benched. Look how he's playing right now. You know what I mean? So when I say the blueprints out there, you don't have to look 10 years in the past. Just look around, right? And, that, and that's my point is don't feel like that you're the only person going through something or you're the only person that has to go through something, right? There's somebody right down the road that's going through it, right down a couple states over that's going through it, you know, and, and, and they're handling it really well and they took advantage of the next opportunity. And I, I would be uh, shocked if that doesn't happen, you know? What, what challenges does the Louisville defense pose? You know, it's like week in and week out, it seems like, you know, I look at uh, statistically and they're, you know, every defense is like close to the top and then this defense is, is the top, you know, scoring defense. And so it's, it's, they're very similar to the last couple of defenses we've played. You know, you look at NC State, Florida State, and them, I mean, they're, you know, they're not giving up a lot of points. They're not like giving up a lot of yards. Their third down is really good because they rush the quarterback really well. Uh, so, you know, it's going to be one of those games where we got to grind out drives and, and grind out points, you know. And I thought last week to this week, you know, we did a much better job in the, in the score zone, minus one possession. But I thought, um, you know, the one at the end of the half, you know, I wish I would have called another play uh, before the field goal, you know, but uh, but you know when when things are going fast and you call a play and it don't work, it's easy to to look back at it. But you know ultimately um, the way that the way everything went was um, was was to the T to get us to the end and hopefully you know have that drop. When you get toward the end, do you go back to the book and say, I still have this to break out, I still got this I've shown yet? Are there certain things that you there are, I mean, the, like the, I mean, the fourth down play we ran that Emory got hurt on. You know, that was a play that in a crucial time we were going to run. And, uh, and that time presented itself, you know, much like at the end of the half, the, the option route we did to Brashard, that was a specific time game, specific yard line. We got to that point, it was the right time to call it. Now there's always a handful of plays that you work during the week that those opportunities don't present themselves you know and so it, that's probably more frustrating to me than anything is when you when you feel like you have certain things and then you look back and like well you know but you just carry them over you know you just keep carrying them week to week and and hopefully those opportunities present themselves and sometimes i've you know i've carried things throughout the year that we ran in the bowl game you repped it for 10 weeks you know and so it's just one of them deals is when it gets close to the end, you're like, you look at the baggage and you're like, well, you know, you know, we better get rid of this, you know? So some of that happens too. Have you had any moments in, um, in your coaching time where it kind of started out good, went astray the way it kind of has here, and then you were able to get it back? In Man, I honestly think it happens most years, you know? Um, the, ups, the ups and downs? Yeah. 
Because, I mean, it's just the way seasons go unless you win every game, you know, which you have a couple seasons throughout, you know, I can think of a handful of years. Like when we, you know, at Houston a few years ago, we went 12 and 2 uh, or 12 and 1. We lost our first game and last game of the season. We lost the, the kickoff classic to Texas Tech and then we lost the championship game to Cincy and then we won every game in the middle, right? Uh, but the year before, I think we won three. Uh, whatever it was, right? And so it was really up and down. Uh, so, you know, most times seasons are up and down. You know, you're going to hit peaks and you're going to hit valleys. You know, um, hopefully the way that this program is being built, uh, it's being built in such a way where, you know, it's more steady at the top. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And I think that's obviously the path we're going. Um, you know, to think that it was going to happen this year, we were all hoping, right? Started out pretty good. Um, part of the deal, too, I mean, everybody, you know, wants to know sometimes why you don't play well. Well, sometimes you got to give the other team a little bit of credit, too. You know, you start playing a little bit better teams, conference plays towards the end of the year. That matters a little bit also, you know. And so you just look at how everybody's schedule lies, you know, and then you you can, you know, you can logically look at things and see why things are, you know. Coach Chris Moss said uh, Jakari's going to be competing. Yeah. Tyler's starting, Jakari competing. In practice, does that mean Jakari gets any first team looks, or is it primarily just he's running with the twos? We'll see how it goes. I mean, I haven't really mapped out practice for Tuesday and Thursday yet. It's in the process right now, but he was ready to go last week. Honestly, I, you know, if I, if I saw any reason to, to put him in, I would have, you know. Um, to me, honestly, I just, I never saw Emory wavering, you know, I thought it was a very steady approach by him and I thought, you know, and, and look, you know, the moment that you, that you make, okay, I'm going to put somebody in for a drive, then maybe Emory does never gets back on track, you know, I mean, there's a rhythm and, and way that things are that I'm very conscious about interrupting, you know, and it's just, it's who I am and so, um, you know, I'm keeping a very close eye on everything, and look, he, I mean, he's ready to roll, you know, and so if we need him, he will be there, and, and no different between him, Emory, and Tyler. I preach the same thing with every one of them, is when you get that opportunity, take advantage of it, you know, and that's really life, but football, I mean, all you can do is work up to the point to where you put yourself in that opportunity, and then when you get it, hey, let's take advantage of it, you know. Last question for Coach Dawson. Is that really kind of kid? And he's got obviously bigger stuff to deal with right now. But when you showed him the film, he wasn't complete on nine straight passes, but like only. He was what now? He was incomplete on nine yeah. in the second half. I, to be fair, I think only one of them was probably a bad throw. I mean, they, mm -hmm. they, like you said, they, do, they, they do cover pretty well. Yeah. Is he the kind of kid that can look at beyond the numbers and say, God, eight for 23, I was terrible? Does he understand? Does he have that yet? That I think so. Not just what the stats say sometimes? Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, the fact is when teams play man covers like that, your percentages are probably going to go down a little bit, you know, but our, and your big plays should go up. Like there's a, there's an ebb and flow of like, okay, if you sit there and you play a zone defense, I mean, you should be 70% completion, right? Around there. Uh, the more people play man that can play man, right? It's different if you can't play man, right? Everybody understands that. But if they can play man, then obviously windows are smaller. 50% completion percentage is typically pretty good against those really, really good high-end man teams, you know? And so I look at things with a very clear lens when it comes to that. Now, I will say this, you know, to tell you, if I gave you any kind of glimpse of what kind of kid this kid is, right? He's sitting there, I go to the hotel room yesterday and right the moment I walk in, he says, Coach, sorry about the third quarter. I was like, <laughs> I mean, really, you know? But that's just, I mean, that's how his mind is, you know? And so, and it's never all on one person, you know? I mean, everybody's gotta do their job. And, um, but he's very conscious of like the flow of the game and, and all the rest, you know? And we struggled in the third quarter, but it wasn't all him either. You know, I mean, we were, you know, there were, and a lot of it was them, you know? They went in at halftime, and I'm sure what they got was elaborate because we, we were sitting there with 200-something yards in the first half, 
They hadn't given up that this year. And so they weren't happy. So they came out in the third quarter and they tightened it down a little bit. And then we didn't respond like we wanted to. Now in the fourth quarter, we got back up to around seven yards of play and we gave ourselves a chance to, to get back in the game. We have to do a better job in the third quarter in that specific game. And it's not just him, it's just overall.